Welcome back to another YouTube video. You're joined by me. Where are you, babe? Come here. I don't know why, guys, but lately she's been so attached to me. So I brought her on set with me today because I didn't want to leave her home alone. And it's too hot for you in the house, so it's nice and cool here. So we brought her along with me. But now she's just ridiculously attached to me. And it's because she's uncomfortable with her surroundings. So we're gonna work with Buttons and myself on today's YouTube video. And today's YouTube video, video is gonna be based around five top movements that I need you to start doing on your upper body days. And like always, as women, we're always a little bit terrified of doing upper body movements in case you're gonna get jacked up on big and manly and masculine. That's not gonna happen to you, I promise promise, promise you. You can't spend the rest of your life just training your glutes. You can't spend the rest of your life neglecting your upper body. It's so important for your overall development, muscle system, muscular and skeletal system. So please do not neglect it. So without further ado from me and buttons, it's time for exercise number one. Okay, so the first exercise we're gonna do is an Australian pull-up. You can do pull-ups, but honestly, like, do you know what? It's like the two things that let me down in life are my calves and my pull-ups. I can squat 100 kg, I can hit thrust 200 kg, but when it comes to a pull-up, we're just gonna ignore the fact we can't even do one properly. But anyway, I can do Aussie pull-ups and they're just as good. So the way you're gonna do it is you're gonna place a barbell pretty much about your hip height, just like so. That's what you're gonna do, that's your first positioning. You're gonna come down and for a beginner, you're gonna have your legs bent like so. Hands further than shoulder width apart. Thumbs out if you want to, only because if you have your thumbs gripped, you're also gonna activate your forearms. If you have them out, you're gonna focus more on pulling with your lats and your back. Beginner, bend your knees. You're gonna pull up. Your elbows are gonna drive down and you're gonna pull up as close to your chest as possible before you're releasing yourself back down. To make it a little bit more intense, you can position your feet in front of you straight. Do the same movement, so elbows pulling you up, barbell ch close to chest as possible before releasing back down. To make it even more intense, you're gonna keep your legs straight in front of you, but this time you're gonna slowly bring yourself up, hold for three seconds before coming back down. So either way you do it, you're gonna intensify your movement. So remember beginners, bent, a little bit more intense, legs forward, even more intense, con controlling each and every single movement, slowly up and slowly back down. Let's go. So why am I telling you to start doing assisted pull-ups or any type of pull-ups? The reason being is because you're working on your body strength, you're lifting your body weight, and you're also going to be doing movements that maybe necessarily you haven't started doing. With me, I'm really strength train focused. I'm always, always using free weights or machines, and sometimes, sometimes I neglect just using my body weight. And movements like pull-ups, doing things like yoga, pilates, bar, they're just as important because you're working different types of muscles. You're not just working fast twitch or slow twitch, you're incorporating movements that help you build that 360 physique and that 360 all-rounded wellness. The reason I also like doing something like a push-up or a pull-up and it's just using my body weight is because you're working your body in a completely different dynamic that maybe it's not used to. So like I said, I can lift 200 kg hip thrust, I can squat 100 kg barbell, but when it comes to pull up, I struggle. And there's a reason for that. Maybe your muscles are a little bit too dense and you're just getting really used to lift, lifting those big weights that you've kind of neglected just using your body weight. So if you feel like that, then I encourage you to start doing assisted pull ups and work your body in a different dynamic. 
Okay, the next movement we're gonna go into is a shoulder press. Please start doing shoulder presses. You're going to hit all three delts all at once. If you don't know what type of delts you have, I'm gonna simplify it for you. Your shoulder, this region here, is compromised of three predominant delts. So you have your anterior, your middle, and your posterior deltoids. To simplify it, your front, your mid, your back. By doing a shoulder press, you're targeting all three. By doing something like an isolation movement, which is gonna be your lateral raises, you're targeting maybe the mid. By doing a front raise, you're targeting your anterior. So those are really specific isolation movements. But by doing a bigger movement and a heavier movement, such as a shoulder press, you're targeting all three regions. So if you're short on time, if you really wanna work on your shoulder progression, strength, a shoulder press is going to be ideal for you. You can lift more with a shoulder press than you would with, let's say, a lateral raise. Because yet again, it's an isolation move as opposed to an all-rounded move. So how I want you to start this off is ensure that your bench is actually straight up at a 90 degree angle if possible. You can have it a little bit slightly back if you want it to, but then you're gonna just start targeting your chest area and not so much you're completely isolating your shoulder area. So you're gonna bring your weights up to your knees. To help you push the weight up, my top tip would be to help with your legs and your knees. You're gonna bring the weight up just like so and down like so. Flinging the weight up is gonna help you securely place your starting position. And you're not just gonna pretty much like rotate your shoulder and bring the weight up, which could be really dangerous. By actually using your knees, it's much more safer. Your shoulders, I see all the time, whenever I train people who are beginners or even sometimes advanced, I see a lot of people touching their weights at the top. You do not need to touch your weights at the top. You have your weights here, you're securely bringing them up. They don't need to touch the top. They can stay here, far apart, before you bring them back down, push them back up. Bring them down, push them back up. Another thing I see a lot of people do all the time is they have a really secure 90 degree angle stance with their arms. So what I mean by that is, it's really just stretching back and it's creating that perfect 90 degree shape. Really what you wanna do is bring your elbow slightly forward as opposed to completely neutral. You wanna bring it forward. It's gonna put less pressure and stretch on your shoulder and really help you have that balanced security and perform the movement injury free. So remember, not here, but here. Bringing the weight up, never touching, and keeping that constant tension. Having your chest upright as well and your chin nice and tucked to your chest is gonna help you really isolate those shoulders. As opposed to doing this, you're gonna cause a lot of injury. Okay, so the next exercise is actually going to be a chest press. I have said this before on my channel, I'm gonna say it again. Every time I used to have chest press on my program or anyone would do it, I'd freak the F out. I don't know what it was, it just intimidates me. I always had this vision of the weight just slamming my teeth and it just freaked me out, man. And I was always just like, no, 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 I'm not gonna do that. But it's been roughly six months since I've started to properly like do chest press and I'm getting stronger and more confident in the movement. And I just feel like I wish I had done it before. And this is one of those things where everyone always thinks that health and wellness has a set time and a date. And I cannot stress enough, it is timeless. Your health is timeless. Like you should never put a time on it, a date on it, a physique goal on it. Great to have goals, 
to keep you going, but you need to understand it is an absolute privilege to move your body if you can move it. Because there are so many people out there that are unwell, are unable. So the fact that you can and you have chosen not to, I can't, I can't sympathize with you. Like I can be soft and I can be like, yeah, it's fine, I understand. No, like you have the ability to celebrate your body through movement, whether it's strength training, Zumba, walking, I don't care how you do it, just do it. And I know certain things are gonna petrify you, just like me and chest press, but you have to give things a go because it's only going to make you so much more stronger, mentally and physically. So with that whole speech being said, chest press. Same principle as your shoulder press, we're gonna use our knees to drive the weight up. I want your hands to be nice and secured in the middle of the dumbbells. I'm just using dumbbells for the sake of it. You can use barbells and you can look at my other videos of where I've shown you how to perform a bench press using a barbell. Same principle, you're gonna be on your tippy toes and you're gonna fling the weight up with your knees. So one, two, three, fling up, fling up, bring down, just like so. Now I'm in this position. I'm gonna retract my scalpel back. I'm gonna bring my chest upright, chin tucked. I'm gonna bring the weight down close to my chest before projecting back up. Feet, by the way, secured on the ground. The reason being is because it's gonna help you push the weight up and you're not gonna exert energy by just having your feet like soft in the front. Oh man, she hasn't stopped staring at me. Papa girl, tell mommy. I love you. Oh, no. oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's too much, isn't it? She, I feel like I'm her emotional support. She's not my emotional support, I'm her emotional support. Okay, the next movement that I absolutely love doing. I used to do this all the time during lockdown. And whenever I used to do like live workouts or actually part of Sculpt It, one of the programs on Evolve You that I've built, that's a 30 minute, actually under 30 minute workout. You can do it at home, you can do it body weight, you can incorporate weights in it, but it's like one of those hybrid workouts that it does what it says on the tin. You will absolutely be suffering after 30 minutes, but it gets the job done, you've done your workout, and you're good to go. So one of the movements that I incorporated was a plank row. So essentially you're gonna be working pretty much a lot of your body component, components here. Your core strength, your upper body strength, you're gonna be working under time, under tension as well, balance, stability, everything. So essentially what you're gonna be doing is getting into a plank position and I want your feet to be wider than shoulder width apart just because it gives you a lot of security. Having them close together is gonna to give you a lot of imbalance and actually it's gonna be really hard when you have to row. So bring your feet nice and wide. So I don't want it to be up here in the air, I want it to come down in a plank position. Automatically when you're coming down to here and hips are more in alignment with your core, you're gonna be working on that core so much more. It's gonna take a lot of strength for you to keep yourself up. Another thing that's so important is instead of having the weights really in front of you, like this, I need your weights to be in alignment with your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder. Here's why. Number one, this is gonna cause a lot of wrist strain. And remember, your wrists are tiny, so you wanna secure them, and by doing that, you're gonna bring it in alignment with your elbow and your shoulder. Number two, if they're forward, it's gonna be impossible for you to just continue to just row. So, by being in alignment, keeping your core nice and tight, feet wider than shoulder width apart, it's gonna enable for you to row the weight, bring it back down, and switch arms.
One exercise that I absolutely am loving lately is a hollow hold. So what is a hollow hold? Essentially, this is gonna absolutely kill your soul. You're gonna pick your legs up just like so. You're gonna bring your arms in front of you and you're gonna hold your core. See, I'm already shaking. So what I want you to do it is in increments of five to six seconds to begin with, three or four sets. That's it, just give it a go. Legs up, arms up, hollow hold. Come down, repeat and repeat and repeat. Once you get to a little bit more advanced, hold for 20 seconds. Once you get to elite, hold for a minute, I don't know, but it's all about progression. This movement is hard as hell, but I absolutely love it. Let's go. No more. Okay guys, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new today. And I hope you actually incorporate these movements into your upper body days. Like always, thank you always for watching and make sure that you leave a thumbs up. It goes a long way on this YouTube channel. And if you find my videos helpful and educational, send them to a friend today. You never know, you might change their life also. I love you always and forever and I'll see you next time for another video.